Now you come into uh, build the sand further for them, and I feel the, they hope can do many things together more. And I, they're so happy for uh, have a clean water for village. I I was very skeptical as to how feasible this trip was because it was very ambitious and we had a very short time frame. First off, you know we. We put everything together, had our design set, and you know, especially with the sand sieves, you know, we knew what we were going to do and how things were going to work, and day one, like everything changed. The longest day I can remember is being stuck in Meishan Tai all day and walking around the village trying to find somebody to feed us for lunch because we didn't have food. Under these uh, conditions, you know, it, it's, it's definitely hard for, um, it's, it's a high stress environment pile or you know the the stockpile would slowly decrease decrease and you're kind of going like okay we're almost there let's keep going let's keep going we're almost there This, this layer will uh, consume most of the bacteria and viruses and such in the water. And then the sand also acts as a physical filtration. Um, so thereby, between those two things, you actually get pretty clean water. The kids, you know, they're, they're very young and in school they learn a lot and they come home and what they learn from the health center and from the teachers, from the professors, the principals, they come home and then tell their parents. Sometimes because they're so young, you know, these kids are eight, eight to ten years old, but they don't really know, understand um, the reasoning behind it, the health effects, the, the, the disadvantages of drinking dirty water. So the fact that with these workshops that we've worked together to compile and provide, it kind of gave the parents um, a perspective, like a more technical perspective, they could see the microbes in the water, they can see that these are real um, bacteria, E. coli, it's, it's a real thing and you're drinking it and they're seeing their children get sick and it's not normal. One of, one of the locals actually came up to me and he said, you know you're a very good teacher, 
and uh, you should actually consider teaching here Wei Yang Kun permanently. On the job, I did a lot of work with the, I guess I would call it pre-assembly, building all the pieces that went inside the tanks and went around the tanks and building all the complicated, the manifold and the effluent pieces and the influent pieces and making sure that was all ready so that when it got shipped out to a site, it was ready to be put together on the spot. I oversaw the design of the slow sand filters and I made sure that they were built correctly. One of the things that I really enjoy about working at each different site specifically is that even though at each site you're doing the same thing, the system's the same at each site for the most part, but each site is a completely different experience with the people, the, even within the village, like culture is a little bit different between the different, um, you know, different tribes and just the fact that even though everything is the same, everything is completely different and it's a brand new experience at every site. Uh, I think was the most enjoyable part. I'm Danny Storr. I'm a first year mechanical engineering major at Cal Poly. It's good to be back. I definitely miss Wayne Om Kuhn. I miss how friendly everybody is. I miss walking into a village and them saying, hey, like you're helping us with piping, want to come to our feast tonight? I mean, like, I definitely miss that aspect of, uh, of Wayne Kun and all those, all the villages around it. Everybody has been talking about how Wayne Kun has been developing so quickly, and Cal Poly's been there for five years, and they they point out new buildings every time we go, and they're always explaining every time there's a lot of development going on, and this is the first time I actually saw it. My main goal was getting the community involved in our project and excited about it. Uh, it's kind of confusing when you're coming into a community, bringing this weird technology, and your presence is kind of unknown to them. So it was exciting to see how welcoming they were to us. And we recommend as an environmental engineering student, my responsibility on the trip to Thailand was the operation and maintenance manuals and the technology transfer. So, you know, making sure the locals knew how to use the system, maintain the system. Um, I like Thailand. I, I've never been there before. This is my first time. And people are really friendly. Everyone's genuine and nice. And you really don't find that in a lot of places of the world. Everybody has a story over there. Everybody has somewhere how, what they're helping up in the community as well as what they're doing in their own life and contributing. And so, you know, it was nice seeing some of my past friends over there in the village, like Moody or Ying, and even the headman, even the, the headman still remembered me. So it was nice to see. It, it feels great because I always, I always wanted to make a difference, you know, like, I've been working on this project for two years, so it's kind of like the, the accumulation of everything and uh, finally to have it come into the works and kind of fall together. It's like a puzzle, you know, and, and you're like scrambling to line, find that last little piece and then when you put it in there, you look at the whole picture and you see that as a team we've worked cohesively and as a village they've accepted us and as a whole picture we've put in six slow sand filters and I'm, I couldn't be proud of, more proud of us.